Today, we're gonna to cover at least 10 reloading tools that cost under $50 that you should consider for your reloading bench. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna cover at least one reloading tool that you should be using that won't cost you a dime. The first tool we'll talk about today are check weights. I don't care if your scale is $50 or $500. Having a set of check weights to be able to validate your reloading scale is very important, and they can be had for not a ton of money. Now this particular Lyman set right now is running around $46. It was a lot less when I bought it, but there are alternatives. For example, RCBS has a set that's running around $24 at this time. There's also two other kits available from Traumner. The large set is just under $28, and there's a small set that's just over $20. Checking your reloading scale before you use it takes very little time, and I think it's a super important step when you're reloading. But reloaders measure lots besides powder, so the next thing we gotta talk about are calipers. I can't imagine my reloading bench without a reasonable set of calipers. If price is no object, Minotoyo calipers are hard to beat, but again, we're looking for a little bit more budget tools. If you look on Amazon, iGauging has a similarly featured set that has reasonable reviews for around $42. You're going to need a set of calipers, and if you're looking to get some reasonable quality ones, I think the iGauging ones are good ones to look at. After we've acquired a reasonable set of calipers, we're gonna to wanna to talk about comparators. What we have on the table is a Hornady Headspace Comparator Set as well as a Projectile Comparator Set. Why are we gonna want a comparator? Well, what this is allowing you to do is make sure you've set up your size and die correctly. If you're only reloading for pistol, this might not be something you're interested in, but our projectile comparators are gonna be needed so you can consistently measure what's called the cartridge base to ogive. Again, it's a comparative measurement, but this is going to take away some of the variation that you're gonna find in projectile tips and other areas. Hornady's Headspace Kit right now, I think is running somewhere in the ballpark of $45, depending on where you get it from. And the projectile comparator set, depending on which one you get, can run anywhere from the six insert set is somewhere around $34. You can get all the way up to 14 different inserts, depending on what projectiles you're going to be using. That's gonna right, run right up against that $50 mark. Inserts are available individually, but you'll just have to make the decision for whatever you're looking to reload. If money is no object, Short Action Custom sells a wonderful comparator set where you can customize it depending on your calibers that you're interested in. But I believe that starts off right now somewhere around $175. So if you've got the dough, you won't be disappointed. But being able to set up your dies correctly is very important. Being able to consistently set your projectile length is very important as well. If you don't have the dough for the Short Action Customs kit, these are certainly better than nothing. Next item I think you should consider is a stuck case remover. Now, you're gonna find some people that have said that they've never stuck a case. I am not one of those people. I don't stick cases all the time, but if you end up having a stuck case, it's very nice to have a way to remove it. This stuck case remover kit runs around $20, and to me, it's the best insurance against Murphy showing up, and at least for my situation, the couple times I've needed it, I've been happy that I've had it. But if you're one of those people that never has anything bad happen to them, hey, maybe you can skip it. Talking about stuck cases, well, how do we prevent them? Lube. There's certainly a lot of lubes out there, but this is my gold standard, Imperial Case Sizing Wax. Right now, you can get two ounces for around $15. This will go a long way. Like two ounces, probably 5,000 cases or more, if you're using it sparingly, like the directions tell you to. If you're lubing your cases and you're using this, it's very difficult to get a stuck case. But if you've got your own favorite, by all means. Our next tool here, most of you pistol guys can skip. This is a Lee cutter and lock stud. After we've sized our cases, if you're not reloading for pistol, there's a good chance you're going to need to trim them. And this is one of the most affordable methods of doing it. Is it the best way? Probably not, but it is probably the least expensive. The Lee cutter and lock stud come as a kit. However, I would recommend getting the ball cutter because it's just so much easier on your hand. Now, assuming you have a power drill, you can use the cutter and lock stud with the ball grip you do have to buy the adapter for every single caliber you would like to trim, but the cutter and lock stud itself runs around $5.99. The ball head runs between $8 and $10 depending on where you look. Depending on what caliber you need, those seem to run between $7 and $10 depending where you look. So as long as you have a power drill, you can start trimming brass pretty consistently and pretty quickly. There are certainly other methods that I prefer, but this by far is the least expensive. After we've trimmed our brass, chamfering and deburring is almost a necessity. Now, depending if you've already purchased a kit or if you're putting your own reloading kit together, there are several things to think about. This particular chamfering to burring tool that came with my kit, it actually works pretty well, but honestly, the one that I use more than anything is this Lyman tool. 
I've had this lime and case prep tool for almost seven years now, and when I purchased it, it was only $16. Earlier this year, I was looking up some pricing on some items, and it was around $24. Unfortunately, when I'm making this video, it's actually all the way up to $33. Besides being able to chamfer and debris your cases, you can separate the two halves, and with the tool comes two sets of tools. These are primer pocket cleaners, I'm not a huge fan, but if you'd like to clean your primer pockets out, they do work in a jam. The other two that come here are crimp removers. Now, I will tell you, they do work. Are they my favorite tool? Absolutely not. However, if you need to do a couple cases in a jam, they will certainly function. Being able to have the handles, remove your chamfering and deburring tools, put another tool in its place. This tool is very handy, and it's one of my favorites. I use it all the time. So this is a case prep tool from Redding. You don't have to get this, but you'll see that this contains case neck brushes. If you'd like to get this kit, right now it's running somewhere around $33. However, you can get individual brushes, assuming you've already purchased the Lyman tool, you can get brushes anywhere between $3.50 all the way to around $7, depending on your caliber needs, and use them in the other tool. If you want your own handle and case neck brushes, this even comes with primer pocket cleaners. It works well, but at least you're gonna need case neck brushes to clean some of the brass out of your case necks, or at least I do. The next tool I wanna to cover are these primer pocket swage gauges from Ballistic Tools. These tools run around $13 a piece right now. They're essentially go, no-go gauges for primer pockets. In case you're not aware, sometimes a failure mechanism of brass is that after so many firings, the, the primer pockets will get loose and they won't be able to hold a primer anymore. If you'd like to be able to measure these, one side should clearly go, the other side should not. They have them for both large and small, and I think they're far worth the $13 for as much as I've used them. Now, another fun tool that I use, depending on how your process works, is a decapping die. Most of your sizing dies are going to have a decapping pin, and you can use it, and that's fine. However, sometimes before I do a clean, I like to have my brass decapped, and I'll use a universal decapping die. Lee makes a wonderful universal decapping die, if there's a chance you're using a caliber that has small flash holes, you might want to look at something like this Redding. This small decapping die has a pin for a small flash hole. If you're using Lapa brass and 6.5 Creedmoor, this is going to decap your brass without wrecking your flash holes. The Lee works for most stuff, but for these small flash holes, this is kind of a lifesaver. It's not a have to have, but it's certainly nice to have when I need it. The next thing we'll talk about is a powder trickler. This particular unit is obviously from Lyman, and this is one of the favorite models that I've used for several reasons. When I bought my first reloading kit, it came with this trickler. Now, I'm not here to disparage anybody, but this just doesn't work very well. It doesn't have very much weight, it's not height adjustable, and frankly, it's not as easy to clean. For me, this Lyman unit solved all those problems. It's very heavy, it has a weight in the bottom, there's a locking screw you can loosen and adjust the height, it has a longer tube, and it comes apart very easy, and it's very easy to clean. Whether you're using extruded powders or ball powders, it's very easy to clean it up very quickly. As with everything else we've talked about, I'm sure the price is going to vary, but right now this trickler is running somewhere around $29. But frankly, it's a very good trickler. It does exactly what I wanted to, and I've got no complaints. The next tool I want to talk about are funnels. Now, most universal funnels do exactly what you need them to, and reasonably well. So if you just need a universal funnel, you might be okay. But if you ever use extruded powders and you might load a compressed load, this is one of my favorite tools. This is a Forrester Blue Ribbon Powder Funnel with Long Drop Tube. But this funnel with the attached drop tube, when you dump your powder into this, actually allows it to settle. Now some people will happily tell you to shake or knock against your case. I promise you, if you compare this funnel's performance to being able to doing that, this is going to win every single time. And this is relatively inexpensive. Right now, $18.29 on Midway. This funnel works very well. I did a video on it a while ago, and frankly, I think some people don't believe the results. It just works that well. There are certainly more expensive funnel options, but again, this is well over a $50 kit. But if you've spent the money, they do have drop tube extensions you can get for it that are gonna perform the same function, just so you're aware. But if you're loading compressed charges and you're on a budget, this really is a great product. For those of you that never make mistakes, you guys can skip this next tool. These are kinetic bullet pullers. If you've seen a projectile too far or you're unsure of a powder charge and you need to disassemble a reload, these are tools that will work and they're relatively inexpensive. 
Our blue Frankfurt Arsenal is running just under $14, and our orange Lyman model that can do Magnum cartridges is a little over $21. If you end up needing to do larger quantities, the Hornady Camlock puller works pretty well, but the puller itself is in the ballpark of $33, but it needs a collet for every single caliber you intend to load. Individual collets run somewhere in the ballpark of $12.50, give or take. So if you don't have very many mistakes to disassemble, these kinetic ones will work just fine. But if you're going to have to disassemble a lot, the Camlock Polar is a lot more efficient, at least in my experience. A couple other nice things to have are universal reloading trays. And clearly they handle multiple calibers. But there are caliber specific reloading trays and these are very nice if you're loading a very specific cartridge. The universal blocks right now are running somewhere in a ballpark of $5. Some of these caliber specific reloading trays run somewhere around $8. So it might be a couple extra dollars, but in some cases they just do a better job than your universal tray. And your Frankfurt Arsenal actually has a list on the bottom of the tray of all the different calibers and which number corresponds to which caliber. Our next product is a little bit more of a niche product. But if you're using a bushing die that accepts bushings, like this Redding S die, this is a Redding S bushing die, it can accept, obviously, Redding bushings, but Shorex and Cousins make universal bushings that work very well. In fact, in everything I've tested them, I've had less average runout across the board. Right now, they're running about $35 per bushing, and if you already know the size of your bushing, you might want to size it down about one thousandths, as they tend to give just a slight bit less neck tension However, I've certainly had better concentricity across the board. Again, if you're not using bushing dies, not for you, but if you are, something you might want to consider. If you're going to be working with much military brass, I would consider the RCBS crimp remover. Depending on which primer pocket size, they're about $20 each. I've heard they work very well, and if you're going to be doing a lot of military brass, I think it'll be a reasonable investment. What free tool can I possibly offer to you guys? I think you guys should check out Gordon's Reloading Tool. Gordon's Reloading Tool is a free software you can download. It's similar to Quick Load. You can input all of your cartridge details into the program, and it can help you estimate the pressure and velocity that you might achieve. It can help you predict your velocity adjustment if your load data has a different barrel length. It's a very powerful program. I really encourage you to download it and try it out. The tools we've covered today have worked very well for me, but I have made some mistakes along the way. Check out this video right here where I cover five beginner mistakes that you should try and avoid. I hope to see you come back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.